Hello, in this OpenGL video, we're going to show you how to draw lines using the GL lines. So, a line, pretty simple, you specify two vertices with an X, Y and Z value, and it draws a line in between it. You don't need to handle any of the points in between, but just to illustrate what this is, I'm sure you, everyone understands, but if you don't, you have a point here, so it doesn't really matter what, what this point is, I'm just going to call it V1. Then you have a point here, let's call this one V2. And what it does is draw a line from one vertex to the next vertex. So you specify two points and it draws a line. It couldn't be simpler than, oh, drew another line accidentally. It couldn't be any simpler than that. It doesn't matter whether you specify, let's say, this vertex first or this vertex first. does not matter at all. So let's actually get to drawing it. First of all, we're going to create a ray, which is our GL float line vertices equals. And we're going to put the first vertex at, uh, how about 200 by 100. Put zero point z we'll put zero for z axis. Next we're gonna set this to one hundred by three hundred and zero. So now that we've got the actual vertices all set up for our line, technically I'm just thinking this isn't a line. I mean geometrically speaking, if you're talking about it mathematically, this isn't a line because this would be a line segment, because it's a segment of a line. A line in in geometry is something that goes forever in both directions where this has two endpoints so technically isn't a line but OpenGL calls the align so it's neither here nor there but they're going to call it GL underscore lines underscore segments and now we can actually start rendering our OpenGL to do that do GL enable client state and we just specify the parameter as GL underscore vertex underscore array we're just telling OpenGL that we're ready to deal with a vertex array with anything that you enable you want to disable it as well so let's just do disable client state to specify what you want to disable because there's a bunch of different stuff that you can enable and disable so you need to specify it next we need to create a vertex pointer so GL vertex pointer first of all we specify the actual size and this is how many coordinates or actually I should say how many pieces of data we got how many axes are we using we're using one two three because x y and z so we would have the size as three the type is gl underscore float destroyed is going to be zero this just means how many pieces of data is there between vertices you would have a number larger than zero when you have other information so maybe you had information regarding color afterwards but that's for a different tutorial and now you just specify your line vertices array pretty simple stuff so far next you do GL draw arrays you specify what sort of drawing mode you're doing you're doing GL underscore lines. Now you specify what vertex you want to start at. You want to start at the first vertex. We don't want to skip any out. And then you specify how many vertices you have. We've got two. So now that is all good. We're actually ready to run that. So let's run this. I'm just going to move the window. Something weird is going to happen. As you can see, my line jumped and increased in size. This isn't a feature, this is technically a bug, but this is a bug with my machine. This is how it would look on your screen, and you wouldn't get that weird jump and resize motion. It's just because, I specified in my other videos, but if you haven't watched them, it's just because I've sort of hacked my IMAX display, so it has a higher density resolution. It's just better for video recording, but I just have to do that, because otherwise it gets confused. But again, you wouldn't have that issue, neither would your users. So that's nothing to worry about. So actually let's open that up again. So we've got a fantastic little line that goes from one point to the next. You might be thinking, it looks a little thin. Can you actually increase the width of this line? Yes, you can. 
And to do that, you simply put gl line width and just specify a width. I'm going to put 10 semicolon. And now if we run this, as you can see, the line is now thicker. You might think, this doesn't look like a line that you've ever seen because why is it sort of flat there? You would expect it to sort of be at an angle. And to do that, you need to smooth out your line. To do that, very simple stuff. Just enclose your line code in GL, enable, provide a parameter of GL underscore line underscore smooth. As with anything that you enable, make sure you disable it. So let's just disable this now. Disable. Run this now. And now, as you can see, we have something that looks more like a line. It's as if you've got a really thick pen, put it on the screen, and just drew a straight line. That's how we want it to look. Is there anything else you can do with that? And yeah, there is. There's quite a few things that you can do with it. You can do GL line stipple, which allows you to do stuff like dots and dashes. You just need to enable that functionality. So to enable it, you do GL, enable, GL underscore line underscore stipple, semicolon. And now what you do is GL line stipple, you specify a factor, let's just put this at one for now, then you specify a pattern. So what I'm gonna do is put do 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 zero x zero oopsie daisy zero x zero zero ff so this is a sixteen bit in not integer sixteen bit yeah at least a technically a sixteen bit integer a sixteen bit hexadecimal value so let's just run that, and as you can see, we have a dashed line now. I'm not going to really cover hexadecimals in this video, because if you're doing OpenGL, you should already be aware of what hexadecimals are. We'll create a separate video just to briefly go over what hexadecimals are. But like I said, we're not going to cover in this one. But what is happening here? What we've got is this diagram that we found online. This is fantastic. And it shows you that this pattern we have like 0x, 0, 0, 0, ff, and it gets the number of ones you have, and it draws, if it's a 1, it draws it, if it's a 0, it doesn't draw anything, if it's a 1, it draws it, if it's a 0, it doesn't draw it, and that's what it's done right here, because f is 1, 1, 1, 1, actually I'll, like, I'll write this out, so if I open up sublime, so 0, x 0, 0, ff is equivalent to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And what it's done, it actually reads it from right to left because that's how you read binary. So this is all on, so that's why you've got this line. And then you've got another part of the line this is all off these two are hence why this is off and then this is on again so it just loops through this again and does the same pattern again and again and again and as you can see we've got various patterns so let's try this one because this looks a little different so 0c 0f 0c 0f 0c 0f we should sort of have dots and dashes with this one now and as you can see, we got a dot and dash effect. And it actually would look better if we decrease the width. So let's just set this to 1. That's the default value anyway. So as you can see, we got a dot and dashes effect with our line using GL line stipple. You might be thinking, what actually? I'm just going to go back to Sublime again. So like I was saying, this, it has 4 on, 4 on, 4 off for off that's essentially what it is but these numbers are multiplied by the factor so if we set the factor to something like 5 for example they would be 20 on 20 on 20 off 
20 off. So let's just change the factor to 5. So just make sort of a mental note of what that looks like, or a screenshot. Either one will be fine. And as you can see, there's more of a gap. And the reason there's more of a gap, like I was saying, also, as you can see, the dots, with this, this is the dot and this is the dash, they're longer. The reason they're longer is because we've multiplied them by our factor. So anything that's on is on for longer. Anything that's off is off for longer. So that's what you can do with the factor. And like I said, it's just basic hexadecimal. Not going to cover any more than this in terms of our hexadecimal code. And also what you can do, because we've specified some parameters here, or properties, line width, line stipple, maybe we don't want this to cascade down into our other lines that we might have in our game. So what you would want to do to prevent that, you do GL push attribute, you do GL underscore line underscore bit, and then just disable it. Oh, I forgot to disable this. It doesn't. It didn't really matter in this tutorial because we don't have anything else here. But let's just disable it. Disable. So we push the attribute right there, and we just need to pop it. We just do gl pop attribute. Doesn't take any parameters. It just pops whatever attribute has been pushed last. So now if we run this. Still get the same code, obviously, but what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this, chain this to a two, chain this to, I don't know, three, two, just increase it all by a hundred, so it's slightly different. Copy and paste this, and the only bit I'm going to change is change this to line vertices and remove the line stipple and the line width. Set this line width to 5, run it, and as you can see we have a solid line here and we have a line with a stipple and a width. But if we were to disable the GL push attribute and the GL pop attribute and rerun this, as you can see the stipple and the width have now cascaded down so pretty simple stuff there's some great stuff that you can do with lines recommend that you check it out see what sort of patterns you can do create parallel lines create perpendicular lines if you have any questions regarding OpenGL or anything at all feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions dot php there'll be a link in the description there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video and the source code from all the other videos so if you missed any of those videos or you just want a refresher on what we did in that check that out if you like this video please give it a thumbs up comment and please hit that subscribe button as it really does help us grow and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day